Hello and welcome to Teens on Topic. My name is Ben Skinner. I'll be your host today. Today, we'll be talking more about the impact of the coronavirus on the American educational system. We're joined today by four guests, three of whom are high school students and one who is a college student. So guys, today, why don't we start off by talking about the impact of the coronavirus on the high school system. So like many high schools around the country, our graduation ceremony at Davis High School has been canceled um, or, or in, at least in the, the traditional sense has been canceled and we've been moving over to an online graduation ceremony and all of our traditional events have all become socially distanced. So why don't you start us off, Zoe, what are your thoughts on how this, um, on how the graduation has been going so far and the events that we've had? What do you think about this? Um, I actually thought that um, the drive-by like celebration thing was a really nice touch because I didn't um, I was really worried that the district wouldn't put any effort into um, things other than digital classroom, but the fact that they took the time to set that up, um, spend the money on it, have a running radio show of thoughts and messages from teachers and uh, staff, I just thought that was, I thought it was really, yeah, I thought it was really, really nice. And um, let's see, I think, um, like, I know social distancing um, has been lifted in Davis to like a certain extent. So um, with that, I guess I'm kind of wondering, um, I just, I, I, I keep, I'm sorry, I keep hoping that we're staying safe because I know even at that event, there were a lot of people who were not socially distancing, distancing, even though the event was kind of lifted and downtown was bustling. Like it was like early March. So um, other than that, I thought it was a really nice event. Yeah, it has been nice to see a lot of community involvement it's really been made clear that people in this town really care and really want to help us have the best high school experience that we possibly can. What are your thoughts, Adam? Yeah, I totally agree with what Zoe said. I think the event in itself was really like meaningful to me because I just saw like all my neighbors, all my teachers from middle school and even elementary school, all my high school teachers coming out to show support for us coming out. They all like built like giant, like, sets and stuff like all the different groups on campus clubs and and sports groups and it was really just like it, it almost made me cry just like seeing all the people like out there for us like davis community and davis parents really care and i think it was really nice absolutely yeah zara yeah i i agree too so unlike um adam and zoe i'm from da vinci instead of DHS. So I saw a little bit of a different perspective, but I also drove through the DHS drive through And I thought it was really nice because it wasn't just towards, you know, a particular school. It was to all of Devin, uh, Davis's, you know, high school community. So I really liked that a lot. And I thought it was, it, it just kind of, it was really nice to be able to like see everyone like who I haven't seen in quite a long time, you know, and maybe I wouldn't have really saw seen them anyways because we weren't that close. But like, especially my old elementary teachers and then at my drive through I saw all of my old junior high teachers. And so it was really sweet seeing people that, you know, before maybe if we didn't have the pandemic, I might've not really thought too much about going to see, but then I saw them and I it made a meaningful impact to me. And it was really nice seeing how the Davis community kind of came together and realized this was an issue that, you know, kind of senior year has been kind of torn apart. You know, we kind of were hoping for a lot of things, but then it disappeared. So I, I thought that was really meaningful and it was really sweet. Yeah. One thing that I saw that was really interesting was that, like you said, Zoe, there were a lot of people who were not socially distant and a lot of them were not even wearing masks and looked like they were really making a pretty minimal effort to try and avoid becoming infected. So what do you guys think? Do you think that's something that is like, a, do you think we're at a point where that is a behavior that we should think is, is okay as a society? Or is that something that we should still be discouraging? Because obviously, the coronavirus threat it is not at all gone. So while people are talking more about reopening and trying to return to lives as normal, the reality is that we're not in a situation where that's something that we're able to do, in my opinion. What are people's thoughts though? Do people think that's something that is okay or something that we should be discouraged? Who wants to, uh, to talk on that issue? Adam then, what do you think? Do you yeah, think that ahead. is something um, that's okay, yeah. 
I think that we should definitely continue to be cautious just as like our community in Davis. And I think it's important to like continue wearing masks just like when you're outside, when you're, you know, you know maybe seeing friends from a distance, when you're on a walk, I think you should always wear a mask, especially when you're like picking up food or like going to somewhere where people and strangers might be. But it definitely is like, it feels like some of the people in our community at least are at the point where they're kind of fed up with the whole, you know, like all of these precautions and all the mask wearing and the, the distancing. So I do see like where they're coming from. Like it's, it is really hard to like stay, stay vigilant and stay, you know, careful, but I think it's important and we need to keep, you know, staying on top of that. Yeah. yeah the I, reality is that really not very much has, has actually changed since we, we, uh, moved over to distance learning for school. So I think you're absolutely right, Adam. It, it is very important to still be cautious. Zoe. Oh yeah, um, I definitely agree with Adam that like, I can, I can understand people's perspective that after two months, they're really tired of this. I still think it should be enforced, but it's interesting that 2020 has really thrown so many things at us that now even the coronavirus, the pandemic is not at the top of people's lists on what to focus on. So it's, it's just really interesting to witness that. And um, I still I still do think that like social distancing and masks should be enforced, but I also understand why people might feel tired, but still like for the greater good for the public safety, I think it should still, yeah, we should still try and keep up with that as much as possible. Zara, what do you think? I, I agree that it was, it, that's, I did see some people that were not really following regulations in a way. Um, we had like for my school, some people participated in a distance picnic, but that word distance was not actually really there at all because I saw photos and videos of the picnic afterwards and no one like very few people were actually following distancing, but a lot of other people were huddled in groups close together and I just, it felt a little weird because you called it a distance picnic and then you didn't follow that and it's you know, the threat of coronavirus isn't really gone. So you should still, you know, pay attention to the rules. And I understand like everyone's quite fed up. I'm fed up, but I'm still following guidelines because I want to keep other people safe who are, you know, they can be harmed because of this. So it's, it's a little disappointing yet I, I can understand it's just it's very disappointing yeah for sure so thank you guys for sharing your thoughts on the high school situation now I want to turn our focus towards the situation regarding colleges and we are fortunate enough to be joined today by Emma who is a current college student so Emma what is your perspective on this been as a current college student how have you been interpreting what's been going on it was definitely a, a big change for me going back uh, home here in Davis. I am attending a school on the East Coast called Drexel in Philadelphia, which was really exciting. I got to live in a city and I got all these opportunities, which I was super excited about. But when Drexel transitioned to online learning, I think there was a lot of losses on the students' part. Drexel had a lot of technology that was available for students and a lot of high-tech labs that obviously a student is not going to have that same level of technology in their own home. So that was definitely disappointing, especially when tuition is the same price. So it's always been a little frustrating thinking about the how expensive tuition is compared to the quality of education we're receiving. But on the bright side, I think my teachers have honestly been pretty good about transitioning online and being understanding of the fact that it's a difficult time for all of us and that a student might not be at their best levels. Yeah, for sure. And to our, our current high school students, what are your guys' expectations going forward as, as far as, uh, at least for us seniors, our potential first semester of college? Adam, I know you're a senior. Do you expect and or hope that college will be in person in the fall? Or do you think that it'll be continued online like Emma just described? So um, in my situation, I'm going to a UC and the UCs have come out and said that they will be having um, on-campus school uh, in the fall. But 
I think it's definitely going to be like a hybrid system because they've talked about having some in-person classes where the class sizes are like below 30 students. So some like seminars and like certain classes. But honestly, I think most of the like a wide majority of the classes are going to be online, but we're still going to be living in the dorms. So it's going to be an interesting situation for sure. But we'll have to see. Yeah. Zoe? Um, so I'll be going to um, the East Coast as well. And so it's a private school. So they said that the, it's still going to, um, yeah, it's still going to happen um, on the campus. It's actually going to be in New York City. So it's it should be interesting to see how the city picks up from like everything that's happening. Um, but so far, current plans are to, yeah, so far, current plans are to resume classes um, there. Zara. So I will also be attending a UC and it's, they said the same thing. I'll actually be going to the same UC as Adam. Yeah, so. Berkeley. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's a little interesting because they did say it will be a hybrid system of in person. And it's a little weird because today I'm supposed to do my freshman orientation stuff. And so I'm kind of scared about, you know, applying for classes because it's a little weird because now class sizes are smaller. So I don't know, you know, if I'm going to be able to get into all the classes I want to, especially being a freshman, you don't have a huge priority over classes unless you were a senior. Those are classes you need to graduate. So I'd be kind of competing with others. Um, but a lot of things haven't really changed for me because I'm also taking what were still going to be online classes if it wasn't going to be, if there wasn't the pandemic because I was going to take some summer classes online to fulfill some courses. So things haven't really, like, I guess it's going to be different, but I don't think it's going to be hard for me to transition. I think I'm expecting what I was expecting in a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I'm curious from our current college student, what is kind of the experience like of having this expectation of what your first year of college is going to be like, and, and then having that just completely altered by the coronavirus. Cause that's definitely been something that us high schoolers have been experiencing, but I'm curious what that's like at a college level. Uh, it's, it's definitely not the uh, first year experience that I was expecting when I went to college, but I think that you are going to lose out uh, if I know that you guys were talking about how uh, your colleges are planning to meet in person, but uh, going online, I think you do lose out on some aspects of the first year of experience, uh, just in the sense of having the, the first year is when you make a, meet a lot of new people since everyone is having this new experience. And to be fair, I did kind of cement what, uh, who I was friends with and who I wasn't friends with uh, by the time that I uh, we transitioned to online classes. But I think that it definitely uh, missed out on, I think, a lot of things socially as well as different opportunities that were offered in the spring, as well as I think this uh, is more unique to extreme weather areas but I am obviously not used to cold weather because I'm from California but it was pretty cold in the winter so I was not leaving my door very often except to go to classes because I could not stand the cold even though I was told it was a mild winter uh, but that I think I also wasn't doing a lot in my winter quarter so I was like I'm gonna get back into it and it's gonna be super fun in my spring quarter and then they said you're going back oh. home yeah for sure does anyone have any final thoughts that they'd like to share related to the coronavirus i guess that's just the last thing i would would add then is that throughout all of this i think what's been really interesting is that while it has been very rough on a lot of people we've also seen like us high schoolers talk about a lot of really positive community outreach and people really trying to show that they care and then on the college level we've seen colleges really doing the best that they possibly can to adapt their curriculum to an online format. And it's, we're all learning so much in this process. 
And I think it'll be really neat to see what long-term changes and what long-term ramifications there are from all of this that's, that's going on. So thank you all today for sharing your thoughts. I'm Ben Skinner. This has been Teens on Topic. Thank you for joining us. We hope to see you next time.